So we'll go over the second lab now, and it will be about experimenting Feng Shui using name pipes. And so we will see how efficient it is to use name pipes, and more specifically, the name pipe rights for the Feng Shui. And so as we've seen before, again, unfortunately, the pull find command can be quite slow, but also setting a breakpoint on the actual allocation is not only slow, but in the case of the npfr.sys canon module and that particular breakpoint, setting this breakpoint on the actual allocation would be too verbose and too noisy because of many paths reaching that code. And so we basically have to set the breakpoint on a single process. And to do so, we have to reverse engineer the npfr.sys driver. So this slide demonstrates how to set a breakpoint for a single process. And so we get the k process structure address using the process command. And then we set the breakpoint and we specify the k process address using the slash p flag. And once we're done, we have to disable the breakpoint because otherwise it's too noisy. And so we see that the breakpoint is inside the np add data queue entry function. We can see that the call to x allocate pull with tag uses the npfr tag as we would expect. And so we set a breakpoint on the instruction just after the call and the rax register will hold the allocated chunk. So the lab we are going to work on is called name pipe spray and it is going to rely on two name pipes to do alternate allocations and then freeing all the chunks from the second name pipe to create holes. And so if you want, you can then add code to reallocate enlistments into the holes. So the K enlistment chunks will be between two name pipe chunks. And so the advantage of doing so is that then you can set a breakpoint on the TM create enlistment function. And when the enlistments are created, it allows analyzing the heap area and we will be able to see the previously allocated name pipes and it avoids having to rely on the name pipe breakpoint, which is really noisy. So this is the output from Winbag after we allocated alternating name pipes chunks. And so using the pull command, we can see the name pipe are adjacent to each other's with the npfr tag, and it's pretty reliable. And then for instance, we show the contents of two adjacent chunks. So for instance, we took the first one ending with 000, and the second one ending with 250. And we can see that there are some uncontrolled header, and then we see the 414141 in the first allocation, and we see our 424242 in the second allocation, which, as you can imagine, corresponds to the A's we wrote in the first pipe and to the B's we wrote in the second pipe. And so after the name pipe writes are alternating in memory, we can read the data from the second name pipe and it will create the holes we want. And so this is the output after we actually reallocate the holes. At least we try to reallocate the holes with k enlistments. And we can see that one of the k enlistments got allocated right after a name pipe, which is what we would want. And so we mentioned that for every enlistment we create, there is a notification chunk that gets allocated as well, which has the tmfn tag, as you see here. And so we can use the breakpoint, that particular breakpoint below, to track where these allocations go and it helps to understand if there is a chance that this allocation mess up with our actually interesting feng shui. So let's analyze the source code of the lab, which is the name pipe spray lab. So there are many similar things to previous analyze labs. So we're just going to detail the new things. So we see there is a new structure called Feng Shui. And so it details two groups identified by number one and two. And we see there is all the KTM objects related to the enlistments being spread for transaction one, resource manager one, and transaction manager one. And then there is a second group identified by number two, which is again, enlistments, transaction, transaction manager, and resource manager. And we track different counts for both groups because in the first group, we'll have extra enlistments being spread in order to uh, get a deterministic layout. Then we have the name pipe structure. So this structure is used to track all the elements related to the name pipe spray. So we see there is a pipe name, uh, there is a 
a drain size, which is basically the size of the chunk we want to allocate and then drain in order to either allocate specific chunks or free them. A count, so usually we would want to spray drain count of size, drain size, and then drain them to free them. Then we have handles for different events that are used because we're going to use two threads to spray the name pipe because obviously we need one to read the chunk and the other one to write them in the first place. So they're going to have to synchronize with each other. And so we have one handle to say, okay, I'm ready. Um, the name pipe has been created. Another one to say, okay, I'm ready to drain uh, the, the actual chunks. And then the last one to say, okay, the, the drain is finished. And then we have a CPU core because we're going to actually attach the thread to a specific core for spraying the name pipe chunks. And then we have a buff size which we're going to use. So this is the function that will be executed into another thread, which ends with underscore thread. And so this name pipe server thread function is taking as an argument the name pipes server structure that we've just seen before. This one. And it's going to use all the variables stored into the structure in order to do its job. So it's going to actually pin to the CPU core. It's going to actually use the buff size, um, which is basically an internal buffer used for storing the data of the name pipe. So we're allocating the, the buffer here, and it's going to be used internally inside the name pipe. So the create name pipe function takes the input buffer size, the output buffer size. And here we create the name pipe as a duplex, which allows us to read and write from the server. Once we have created the name pipe, we set the events so the client knows the name pipe has been created. And then we connect on the name pipe, the server. So then we go into a loop and we can see the first thing we do is we wait on the actual event to tell us that we are ready to drain to read the data. So the client will actually write the data and the server will just read the data once it's told to read the data. And we can see that basically it's gonna loop uh, drain count times and each time it's gonna read drain size. And once it has done all of that, it will actually set the event to say, okay, the drain has been done. So the next function is the actual function initializing the name pipe thread itself. So we can see it's creating the thread and passing the handler, which we've just described. And it's just initializing the variables for that thread. So this function is used to spray uh, name pipe chunks. So this will be done by the client. It's taking the handle to the pipe to um, write the data and it's going to write spray count chunks uh, with the data pointed by chunk data and of the actual size len. And so we can see it loops spray count times and it's going to write the data into the pipe. And we have to do it by chunk uh, len um, granularity just to make sure that the actual chunks are allocated of the, of the right size. So this is the client part to actually connect to the name pipe. So we see it's going to actually call the create file function with the read write permissions, even though we, the client will only use the write permission. So now we have the name pipe entry function. So this function is going to actually uh, allocate adjacent name pipes and it's going to then create holes and then um, the goal is going to be to refill the holes with actual k enlistments. But this function is just about manipulating the heap to actually have this interweaving name pipes and then creating the holes. So we see it takes a count, which is the number of name pipes that we want to spray, and it's taking also an extra um, count that will be used to actually initially spray name pipes in order to fill all the holes. So we see lots of different variables. We see the different pipe names for both pipes. It's using a, a spray len of 200 hex. So we can see 
it uses the previously described functions to initialize a name pipe and then um, connect to it as a client. So this will be the server part and this will be the client part. And obviously the client part will wait for the ready event to be um, initialized before connecting to it. So here the goal is going to be to actually write data into the buffers. So the one we see here. So we're going to have to allocate the, these buffers and just write some data like A's or B's. Then we can see here that um, this loop will actually use only the first pipe in order to fill all the holes on the heap. So we're using the extra uh, count in order to loop extra times in order to fill all the holes, at least most of the holes, as, we, as much as we can. And then we see that uh, it's printing some message to say, okay, we've just sprayed a bunch of name pipe writes. And so this is what we've just done. So we can analyze the, the layout on, on the debugger. So then the goal is going to be to actually loop count times and use the write file function to spray chunks using name pipes and doing it alternatively on the first name pipe and, and the second name pipe. And then we see that there is a pause and it gives us time to analyze the spread alternative name pipes chunks on the heap in the debugger. Finally, uh, we can see some code to actually set an event to drain uh, the chunks, the data from the name pipe too. So by setting this event, the server thread will actually loop as we've seen before. Because here it was waiting on the drain event, so it's going to loop and read the data. And so then it's going to set the drain done event. And so here the code is actually waiting for the drain done event handle. So once it's done, it's going to continue execution. And so it's going to just print that it has created a bunch of name pipes holes by reading the chunks from the second name pipe. And so we should be able to analyze the holes. So then we can analyze the main function. So we see we define an enlistment count of 5,000 hex. And the code is very similar to what we've seen so far, where we create all the KTM objects to have something we can use to work with. So obviously the goal is to spray alternating name pipe structures, free one set of structure in one of the name pipe, and then leave the other intact, and then observe the resulting whole layout. So all the objects are very similar. Here we can see it calls the function doing the spray and the actual holes, and it's using enlistment counts and only 100 hex extra in the first place to fill all the holes. And so once you've done that and you analyze the layout is, is good, you can actually also add code to allocate a bunch of enlistments, um, hoping to fill all the holes that have just been created. And then you should be able to analyze a layout with k enlistments adjacent to name pipe chunks and so yeah now it's your turn